Cameras have come a long way over the years, and they've armed us with some useful tools we could use, so. Today, we're gonna talk about false color. False color is a scale that we could follow to get correct exposure quickly, and IRE shows us the values starting from zero being completely black with no detail, and anything above 100 will be clipped and white with no detail. The scale is broken down into a couple different colors, but I'll give you a quick rundown on the important ones first. At the bottom of the scale, we have purple, which is zero IRE, and it means that we have complete loss of detail. Let's avoid this like the plague. Next, we have shades of blue that can range from two to 24 IRE, which means we're close to losing detail in that area, but take it as a warning that you're about to lose detail in that area. Next, we have dark gray, which is 24 to 43, which means we're entering underexposed or leaving, depending which direction you're going. After that, we have green, light gray, and a peach color that is 43 to 58 IRE. This is the money zone. This is the area where we want our skin to sit when we're exposing an image, but we'll talk about that later in a few. After that, we have yellow, which is 84 to 93 IRE. Let's think about that like yellow on a street light. It's giving you a warning to slow down before you overexpose. And finally, we have red, which is 100 to 109 IRE, which is red. We're losing all detail in the area and your highlights will be overexposed. Remember, red means stop. Okay, now let's jump into the footage. Blue means we're about to lose detail in the blacks, but we haven't lost any detail yet. And if we push the ISO, you can see here, we start getting red and yellow. This means you're clipping. As we covered before, yellow is letting you know to slow down, and in the red we have loss of all detail. And then you can see the zebra is telling you that there's no information there too. Okay, now let's mess with the settings, and now we can see that it's properly exposed. So let's bring the ISO down now. It's around ISO 100, and now you can see that we have blue in her hair. This gives you a good indication that you're about to lose detail in that area. So here we can see that we've introduced that pink into Julie's face, which means she's properly exposed in that area. Now I'm going to push the ISO so we can see the overexposed areas. So if we take a look here, it's sitting at like 90 to 100 IRE, which is the super bright red and yellow areas, which means your image is completely clipped. So let's avoid that at all costs. Now that I gave you this little rundown, let's set this up so you can see it in a real life scenario. So I'm going to shut off all the lights and we're going to start from zero and go to hero. Yeah, zero to hero. <laughs> okay, so let's turn off the lights and this is when things get a little muddy. So a good rule of thumb is to expose for the areas that you have no control over in your scene. So for me, it's this back window. So I'm going to expose it over here until it's sitting around like the pinkish grayish area and we'll compensate for that later. So let's make sure it's not clipping. If we take a look here, we can see we're not losing any detail. And if we push it anymore, we start losing detail. We get that yellow and red again. And it's saying, hey, slow down. So now that we have that in the correct spot, we can see that Julie's completely covered in shadow. And that's not a good look. So now that the uncontrollable is controlled, we could bring in some lights. So let's see. Without the light, we could see that we have no detail. And then we balanced our light to the background, introducing proper exposure to our image. So let's take a look. I'm gonna start crawling the light from zero all the way up until I start introducing that pink area into Julie's face. Now we can see the color change to indicate where we have our exposure sitting. So let's keep pushing it up because we still have no detail. So I'll keep pumping up that light until we get a little pink in the area. As we can see, she's starting to look properly exposed and we got a little bit of fill in the background as well. We can control that with cutters and everything, but for the sake of this video, I'm just keeping it simple. And we get into the pink zone, which is usually the best area for human skin tone. And now that we covered all the bases, let's just take a look at the final shot. So I hope you guys find that helpful. This is a very useful tool that you could use to get your exposure nailed on every time. So if you have it in your camera, like any black magic, or if your monitor has it, go for it, use it, learn how to use it, abuse it. So if you guys found this helpful, like, comment, share, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.